With us now is Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut. He serves on the Senate Judiciary uh, Committee. Thanks so much for, for, for being with us. Um, the idea, first of all, this new reporting that the Mueller team is willing to reduce the number of questions. Does that make sense to you? Well, it makes sense to a point. As a prosecutor, both federal and state attorney general, I can see some limits, but uh, this investigation cannot close without all of the relevant question about both the conspiracy to aid the Russians in attacking our democracy and also the obstruction of justice that is continuing in real time right before our eyes. You just laid out the word games that the White House is trying to play in walking back right. the president's very blatant and brazen threats to shut down this investigation, which itself is an act plausibly of obstruction of justice. It, it is remarkable the extent to which uh, the president and the White House, I mean, are continually walking back things that the president has said. I mean, he says them very clearly, you know, he's, uh, whether he's thought about it or not. But, I mean, he, in this case, he wrote it out. It wasn't just a slip of the tongue. And now they're saying, oh, do, you know, kind of ignore what he's actually said, when, in fact, in the past, they've said, well, no, that's, that's what the president actually believes. Absolutely right. And, in fact, going back in history, the president of the United States actually has fired people on Twitter. Right. So to say should stop when it's the commander in chief has real instructional meaning. Do, do you believe this is obstruction of justice, this tweet? It's certainly very powerful, incredible evidence of malign and corrupt intent, which is an element of obstruction of justice, and often the most difficult to prove. It is a threat, plain and simple, brazen and blatant. Its purpose and effect is to threaten and intimidate the special counsel. But there's also a subtext here, Anderson, which is all of the president's surrogates, his cronies on Capitol Hill that are calling for the impeachment of Rod Rosenstein, who controls this investigation, and the other kinds of intimidation coming from my colleagues, unfortunately, very unwisely on Capitol Hill on the Republican side. Do you think the investigation um, can be properly completed without an interview of the president? No. The president has to be interviewed. Because to figure out intent? To know what the intent was, to give him an opportunity to clarify what he meant by these kinds of tweets and a variety of others that he has sent and conversations and uh, other points he may have made privately. A lot of it is in the public eye, but some of it may be privately known only to Mueller at this point. Mueller knows a lot more than we do. If you were the president's attorney, though, you would not want him to sit down with Robert Mueller, would you? I mean, given what he said in front of Vladimir Putin on a world stage with cameras rolling, that they then have to walk back, oh, uh, you know, I said wouldn't, I meant would. Uh, the, what he would say to Robert Mueller, there's just no telling what would come out of his mouth. That's why I think you're seeing this reluctance and constantly moving of goalposts by Rudy Giuliani about what he would accept as a condition for sitting down. Remember, just a couple of weeks ago, he said, there has to be proof of a crime committed by the president. You have to show us your evidence before we'll sit down with you at all. Now they're using other goalposts. And I think that uh, ultimately they are very, very reluctant and understandably so because the president is a tinderbox of potential perjury. Mm. Senator Blumenthal, thank you very much. Appreciate it.